Shalom, shalom, shalom. Hey, what's going on? My name is Michael Sano, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the 12 Cities in Israel podcast. All right, so this one is a cool special episode. I have the opportunity and the honor to sit with someone who's been a friend of mine for four years, um, Hadar Rabinovitz. Uh, Rabinowitz, Rabinowitz, mm-hmm. I apologize. Um, which one? Rabinovitz. Rabinovitz. Oh my gosh, it sounds so much better when you say <laughs> it. Um, who is an artist, a very talented artist, I might add, Thank you. who uses her art um, for therapy. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, of course. <laughs> of so course. I'm so excited. I, it wouldn't have been a show without you. So I have to give a little bit of background mm-hmm. before we go into you. Um, we're still going to go into you, but I did a show, um, the 12 Cities in Israel Bear Sheva episode, which was the pilot episode for this travel show that I vis- It was going to be the greatest thing. It was going to be on all the channels. Well, it didn't. It didn't show up. It's still on YouTube, and I'll put the link in there. But I met you while we were doing that, and you just, you captivated everyone who watched it. (laughs) You captivated me, and I said, this person, I'm staying in touch with this person. She's awesome. I'm lucky. I'm lucky. Um, That's so great. So where are you from? I born and raised in Be'er Sheva, where when you met me, the same place in Be'er Sheva, uh, but I was traveled for uh, mm-hmm. almost 10 years outside from Be'er Sheva and a few years outside from Israel, and I came back. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Um, where is your family from? My family is from Be'er Sheva. Okay. Actually, my mother born in Morocco. Oh, wow, Morocco. Yeah. <laughs> and my father family is from Romania, but he born in Israel. Oh, okay. And they met in the south, and... Bring family to life, you know. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, now, are are the people in your family, are any of your family members, are they creative? Are they artistically inclined? Do they do art? Uh, I think everyone are creative. Creativity is like our uh, the blood of our soul. You don't need to prevent it. You don't need to to work on it. it you just have it. And in day in day life, you you always creative. This is how we survive in life. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they all creative, just like you and me. Uh, but they don't do art. Okay. <laughs> if this is the question. No, no, that's okay. Now, when did you you start going down the creative path when were you young were you very young or were you in your teens or what I think all my life I was connected with my creativity always uh, preventing uh, things always taking uh, two things and mix them <laughs> to make uh, something else and every time my mother was sending me to clean my room my creativity was blowing up you know I started to hang things on the wall and to paint do everything just not to clean the room wow <laughs> uh, but my dream was to be an actor and all my life I wow. dreamed about that. Okay. Yeah. And I I was traveling Asia for a few years. Mm-hmm. And when I came back, I wanted to go to an actress uh, studio, special one, unique one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I arrived there, they told me uh, the... Um, um, they already booked, okay? Oh, they feel, it was full. Yeah, it was full for this year. Okay. Uh, and I was staying there, and I told the 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 Yoram Levinstein is the guy that owned the studio, oh, wow. and I told him I'm not going to go because I'm not going to leave because I'm your number one actor. And after one day that I was sitting there, he was he, he thought I'm very rude, and I did. I was. Uh, he told me, okay, I, I'm going to do a test. Do you have uh, everything uh, prepared? I said, yes. And he took me to the school that year. I was the 21 uh, student. Holy cow. <laughs> uh, and I started very good there. But mm-hmm. after one year, it's three years of uh, studying. After mm-hmm. one year, he invited me to his office and he said, I am fired you from this. Um, oh. be, you are a very good actor, but it's not fit to your soul uh, it's going to kill you uh, 
you know all the the actress world mm-hmm. and I was go I, I left uh, his office and I felt very bad because this is you was my life devastated yeah yeah but then I remember that a uh, few months is uh, before uh, I wake up one morning and And I just had that feeling that I'm going to get a message, a big message. I was very spiritual because I was just coming back from mm-hmm. one year in India, you know, traveling by myself. And I walked all day long waiting for my message to come. Okay. It didn't arrive. <laughs> <laughs> And I was uh, working in a pizza store. And two o'clock in the morning when I uh, uh, finished my ship, I, I just was uh, going to go home and someone asked me, can you pass me the grape ju- uh, juice from the fridge? I said, yes, I took the grape juice. I, I brought the grape ju- mm-hmm. t- juice to him. And he took my hand and he says, do you mind if I, if I read uh, your hand? Whoa, holy cow. I said, God. yes, I was <laughs> waiting for you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> so he said, that, that time he says, uh, I don't know what are you doing, mm-hmm. but you are going to do great things with your hands. Wow, that's it, intense. Yeah, yeah, it is. So I, when, when Yoram um, fired me, <laughs> I, I remember this guy, and then I, I just went to the art school, and there was a, a new path for me. Wow, now where was the art school? In the South, Sapir. In, uh, oh, in you Sderot. went to Sapir. Yeah. Uh, other people have told me about Sapir. Mm-hmm. Can you do me just a quick favor and move this over a little... closer to the side like so we this. can it perfect okay. you are doing awesome this is amazing Thank i you. didn't know you went to sapir that's so great <laughs> sapir is a art school in the south they have uh, they have a film program they have all kinds of art programs it's it's really really wonderful if i switch my head it's because i'm talking yeah and explaining to the people who are watching i apologize don't think it's rude please no, no, no. um now before Okay, so this, I'm assuming, was after the army. Yeah. Correct? Sure. So I have an interesting question for you. So being, and, and it's one of the things that I think is really wonderful about Israel is um, in the United States, a lot of people who are artistically con- inclined, who work in the arts, they don't go to the military. Um, but in Israel, you don't have a choice. But there are so many creative minds that are in the Army, the Navy, the Air Force mm-hmm. in Israel. What is it like? And I know the creative soul has difficulty sometimes with being told where to be um, and to be, you know, be here at three o'clock. Okay, I'll be there. Um, what is it like? being this creative soul in the military is it difficult um, I had a great time in my army service I was shooting instructor in Golani Wow uh, yeah I really really enjoyed it I, I, I felt that I'm doing something very um, special very important and I love the people. But I, I did express my creativity side. I tell you a story. Okay, okay please. One time my roommate from the army, uh, she's my best friend still, uh, she went to exchange uh, program in the US. Oh, wow. Okay, from the army. Mm-hmm. So when she went, I was missing her so much that oh. I wanted to surprise her. So I took um, bullets boxes, mm-hmm. okay, and I paint them. And I draw on them, and I just make her like a few cabins cabins that mm-hmm. she, she can put her stuff inside, and I hang them on the wall. And that was her surprise when she came. It was very colorful, full, not, uh, you know, uh, like the army stuff you get there. <laughs> uh, and when you are a woman and you have stuff, uh, you have a place to put your stuff, it's mm-hmm. very important in the army, you know. <laughs> Um, so I did uh, took my creativity out, but inside the inside the, uh, the limits. That is wonderful. And that is one of the big questions that I'm sure a lot of people in the West have because 
traditionally being artistic meant separating yourself from those things, but you guys have made it work here. And I, I, I'm, I'm so pleased to hear that that story, which is wonderful. Um, in line with that, and actually I'm going to hold off on that question, working with your hands. So you now went to Sapir, which is the art school. Mm -hmm. Can you describe what that experience was like? Um, I think this experience was very, um, very special because I studied there in a time, in a period that the, um, um, situation between uh, Gaza and Israel was very, very bad. Yes. Every day we had, uh, read, uh, you know, Tseva Adom, Tseva Adom, the, mm -hmm. um, Siren? Yeah. Yeah. That you have to... Stop everything, even if you are in the middle of a test or something, wow. and just go to the safe place. Uh, and in at the same time, I was reading philosophy, uh, <laughs> studying about <laughs> culture, studying about uh, very deep things that mixed all together. Okay. Uh, and I did all the, this combination in my art. You know, it 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 flows. And I think that the studio that I have now, mm -hmm. uh, it came from this period because we were, uh, I think, 15 people start uh, the, the art, the study of art, mm -hmm. because I studied also art and culture separately. Okay. Okay, I did my BA in culture. And at the same time, I studied four years in art uh, school wow. in the same place. Okay. And in the art school, we were only 15 people, but at the time people left and we stayed like seven women. And every day, five days a week, eight hours a day, we were creating things. Wow. Sometimes together, sometimes separately, but in the same place, in the same energy, you know. And I think this was very uh, healing things yeah, for me definitely uh, also in the and uh, at that period that w the stress was very high in outside oh of i'm us. sure you know yeah. we were like inside a bubble but still you it, it come inside and that point i understand that um women need to be in a circles and they need to do things with their hands mm -hmm. in order in order to get uh, mental health you know, wow. even if they don't talk with each other at the same time, just to be. And when I start to um, um, search about this uh, thinking, I realized that in the native uh, human uh, way of life, w the, the, the men went out to, to bring the food and the woman was sitting in all together, mm -hmm. talking while they're doing things, the, while they're they crafting. Mm -hmm. And this is the, the basic part of life. And this is what I'm doing now in my, in my studio. It's not only for women, mm -hmm. but naturally. Uh, you my, feel a comfort there? No, I, I feel comfortable also with men and kids mm -hmm. and everyone because really I think that everyone are creative. But I think in the Western uh, world, women are, are more open for it. So just naturally, 90% of my customers are women. Wow. You know, I, I, I speak to everyone, but women coming more than men. That's so I think it's changing, mm -hmm. but there is a huge difference between a woman that they th they know that they need to do things like this they they know they need to uh spend mm -hmm. or um um put their money on something for their mental health but men's much much less than, much more yeah. difficult for them yeah. to do that yeah yeah well, so that does remember i said i have a question for you but that i was going to ask you the other one first. So now that question comes. So if you travel throughout Israel, throughout Israel, um, whenever there is a memorial to fallen soldiers, whenever there is a 
Uh, what are the ones that are called? It's right across from City Hall in Be'er Sheva. It's Yad... Yad Vashem. No, not Yad Vashem. The, uh, uh, Andartat Chativat Negev. The one for soldiers. Mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. sons. Mm-hmm. So it's called something, and I can't remember what it's called. Andartat Chativat Negev. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. And inside there, there is this huge um, sculpture. And as you're walking through there, you notice that... A lot of Israelis deal with pain mm-hmm. and their suffering through art. Um, and since you were down in Sterot during that time, you have a unique view into that. And if you could talk about why Israelis are able to be artistic in these hard times. Mm-hmm. Um, can is there anything you can tell me about that? I can't speak in the name of everyone. Of course, I think of everyone course. is different, and I can tell you about myself. For the last 10, 15 years, I'm not watching TV. I don't have television in my house. And I am so impressed by you. That is so awesome. Political uh, talks is uh, out of my life, you know. Uh, and 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 I I, I really tried. Not to um, um, f- fool my life, fill my life with sadness, mm-hmm. okay? Because it's there a- yes. anyway, and it's okay to be there. Sometimes I'm sad, sometimes I'm upset, but um, most of the time I'm working to see uh, the the full part of the glass, you know. So maybe I I, I was in the army. Mm-hmm. I was very uh, Zionist when I was there. Mm-hmm. But now when I speak to people, I see only people. I don't see religious. I don't see uh, if you served the army or you didn't. Mm-hmm. I don't care about that. Okay? I'm, I'm, I'm taking myself out of these conversations. Because every, every people that are arguing about politics mm-hmm. and war and this kind of stuff... Sometimes they think they are right, but if you ask me, I never was the prime minister of any country. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. I don't have any input to to <laughs> to say or to speak that this w- guy was wrong or this guy. I just know that if uh, you're going much more deeper, and if you even if you are religion re- religion people. So you know that God created all of us. Mm-hmm. And we all souls, okay? Mm-hmm. Coming to this world in physical uh, suits mm-hmm. uh, to bring our present to the world, okay? And if we do only this, connected to the present that we have, to serve God, you can name whatever you name yeah, this no, God, definitely. okay? So you are in the name of love. And I know it's sometimes it it sounds uh, very spiritual, but this is the way I live. And now in my studio, I'm doing um, I'm mixing art and um, um, mental uh, things like uh, I do in no- neurographic. Neurographic is uh, like a drawing method, mm-hmm. okay, that uh, reducing stress, and it's. Uh, uh, it uses it uses the the brain hand uh, connection okay. in order uh, to bring reality from the future to the present. Wow! To create the the reality you want because if all the time you go and you think Arabs are like this, religious are like this, men are like this, women, <laughs> are, this is what you're going to see. No, definitely. Okay, so I just want to see <clears throat> love. I really try very hard to be love to see love, to act love in every part of my life. Not all the time I'm succeeding with this, but I'm trying, I'm willing to do it. That's awesome. I that You covered that entire question. Wow. <laughs> so what, what I take away from that is that we uh, use art to overcome the difficulties that we have and to come back to a place of love. Is mm-hmm. that, it, that's correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To connect to our inner self, to connect to our subconscious, to ask questions, big questions that we have, because all the solutions are already inside. Mm-hmm. When you have a question, you already have the answer. Just to connect to, we, we, 
all the time we are in a rush. And when you are doing art, you have the time just to be, not to do, just to be. Wow. That, <laughs> whoa, I, my, wow. I feel blessed to have you here. This is Thank so, you so awesome. Much. All right. So you left Sapir. And did you open a studio immediately? No, no. I was working in a museum. Mm -hmm. It was very uh, a militantic museum. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I didn't like it so much. Okay. And then I, uh, I got pregnant. And I decided to stay one year with my son. Mm -hmm. Because in Israel you get only three months to stay with the children. And okay. it's not, for me it's not logical to have life and then to give it to someone else to raise my son and go work to provide this you know i understand so i stayed with him one year and at that time i was having a birth of my studio i mean i oh, didn't wow. did nothing just in my mind i was creating all all of this and that the one thing that leads me mm -hmm. at that time was the feeling that I just uh, explained it to you before about be, me being with the other woman in the same class. Yes, And yes. create th this feeling, this is what I wanted to bring in life. I didn't know how I'm going to do it. What, what is, our, is our, my method to do it? How is my uh, studio, uh, how I, I will name it? I didn't know nothing. I just connected to the feeling I want to feel, mm -hmm. to the gift I have to give. And all the answers came, and they still coming. You know, I'm I'm always changing. I'm not a tree. I can I can move. <laughs> and the studio is being all the time. All the time is changing. I'm developing, and my studio is developing. My customer, everything grow. Well, I see <clears throat> a lot of your work. Your work comes up on my Instagram feed all the time. It's amazing. Now you Thank work. You. Oh. Absolutely, absolutely. You work in so many different mediums. Mm -hmm, that's right. How, all right. So normally, an an uh, an artist will work as a sculptor, or they'll work as a painter, or they'll work as a silk screen, uh, anything. Mm -hmm. okay. You pull from so many different disciplines. Um. Is it your education at Sapir that allowed you to do that? Or is it just a lifetime of playing around with different things? I think it's um, um, my uh, rude mm -hmm. and curiosity. <laughs> because if something uh, is uh, digging me, okay, I have to try it. I have to test it. And if if I, I feel connected to this, I want to express it. Uh, I can say that in the last year, mm -hmm. I um, I took all the, these disciplines and I concentrate in a uh, few disciplines just to, because I want uh, to mix the... Um, neurological therapy world that I'm, I'm a NLP therapist and neurographic therapist and the art. I want okay. to combine them. So painting and drawing, uh, I can use it much more f f for doing it. Okay. okay. But in the day life and with the children's, because I have like a creative camp, I use everything. And, it's also because I want to teach them that art you can do everywhere with everything. You know, when I was traveling in India, every place I, I went, I was creating with something. I mean, if I were, was in the beach, I was collecting stones mm -hmm. and I make necklaces. If I was in the north, I was uh, taking the sheep uh, wool and I uh, do something. And I, I realized when I was traveling, because I was traveling along and every time I was crafting, mm -hmm. that people are like a magnet to this. You know, you just sitting with yourself and doing something and... People are coming because it's something inside us that mm -hmm. we need. Sometimes we don't know this, but we have it and we need to connect to this. We need to embrace it to our life. Mm -hmm. And when we see someone else doing it, we just 
want to be next to this person until we realize that we have the same uh, skills. You wow. Know? That's, that's amazing. So, so you do a number of things at your studio. You, you've, you've mentioned the, uh, the, the therapeutic aspect of it. And now can you tell us who you do it with? You, you do it with a couple of different groups. You described it to me before we sat down. Mm-hmm. Um, would you go into what you do in your studio, why you do what you do in your studio mm-hmm. and who you do it with? Okay, so I had this uh, art studio. Mm-hmm. I opened it uh, six years ago, and it was only art, okay? okay? But in the workshops, I realized that I have something different. I give something different. People going from uh, like only technical workshop, mm-hmm. but they feel fulfilled. Also because they create something, but also because uh, my words... Uh, the things that I focused on, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the the name of my studio is Wabi Sabi. Yes, and we can, I know. We need to speak about <laughs> that. Uh, and it's it's a comp- it's a whole holistic philosophy of mm-hmm. mine, because when someone come to my workshops and he wants to do everything correct, and I'm trying to release him for doing things right, you know. Wow. And it's really different for him. So when I realized that I have this power, I started studying all the therapy and uh, uh, how you can use your subconscious mm-hmm. to bring uh, health to your life. So I, I, I studied the NLP, I studied neurographic, and, be, and because I was praying to get the bridge between creative, mm-hmm. my creative side, my creative world, to this uh, neurological world, okay? And I, now I'm combining those two, okay? Wow. This is what I'm doing. I'm doing a, like a, um, a intuitive painting mm-hmm. workshops. I'm doing vision board pa- uh, workshops. I'm doing a neuro art. I told you it's a, mm-hmm. like a drawing method uh, that uh, it's a creative coaching that brings creative coaching solutions. People uh, coming to a session of three hours uh, I have three sessions. You, you can take three sessions uh, together and you are going through a way, you know, you're really going deep, deep, deep inside your subconscious and you're changing the path, the neurological path, the neuropath in your brain wow. with the drawing. Now, let me ask you something that for some people has to be terrifying scary mm-hmm. um beautiful don't get me wrong that's yeah, yeah. amazing but to <laughs> come to certain truths ooh, how do you deal with that i think that um i speak to the world mm-hmm. and the people that are with the same resonance with me they will hear me and they will want to take my present if someone, we can both be in the same room listening to the same podcast, but mm-hmm. I will hear something else and you will hear something else because our subconscious is in a different places, okay? So I just speak my truth mm-hmm. and I know that the people that coming, they, with the open hands, they just want to receive and I have something to give. I'm not going to people that I see that the they have a whole different way of think, oh, thinking yeah. and start to, to tell them you need to be like this, you need to do like this. No, this is why I'm not speaking about politics mm-hmm. because I know when in a politic argues, people, they just know their truth and they don't want to move. So there is no um, conversation, okay? It's all my truth, your truth, my truth, no. But... In my studio, it's not like this. People coming in open heart. My heart is also open. I'm a, a student of my uh, students. You know, I, mm-hmm. I study from everyone, and I'm. I, I always understand that the process is never ending. It's endless process. You always have to do things to work on yourself, to play with mm-hmm. your subconscious in order to get the happy life and to feel in love with life and to be um, 
thankful about everything. No, absolutely. Um, there's a couple more things I want to cover. Um, one of them is now I know you do workshops. Um, do you ever display uh, the work of your um, participants, the people who take who who come to the workshop? Do you ever have a show with all of their stuff? No, I never did it, but everything is open. That sounds interesting. Yeah. That sounds because I mean it's a it's a wonderful way to showcase what you do because I know that there I are I have my Instagram display, you know. Yes. <laughs> yes. That I show uh, people art, other people that come to my uh, studio and they work and I paint it, uh, I picture it and I put it on uh, uh, on Instagram, but I never did a like a real uh, only because, and this is why, I know that Bersheva has events where they open up the old city. Your studio is in the old city. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it would be phenomenal if you could get together for one of those events and just show off. See, what what would be great about that, and this is what I think would be beautiful about that, is you would be showing off your art through others. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? And I will give a stage for the people yeah. that sometimes they're very shy about, they always judging their art. And if they put it on some, some place that people can come and enjoy it, they will see and they will get the proof ah. that they are arti- artists. That's wonderful. The other thing... It's a good idea. Thank you. Of course. That's <laughs> what I'm here. I have another good idea okay. and I'm going to help you with this. Okay. So you are a dynamic individual. You are someone who is a force um, in the world. So I don't know. There are some people when they walk through a room, everyone turns their head and goes, that person's here. I don't know who that person is, but I need to know that person. I think the world needs to know you. So starting here, but we need to get you talking on one of these microphones i'm going to show you all the stuff you need to do i think wabi sabi needs a podcast okay i think it absolutely wow. does because you think my english is good enough or do it in a uh, by in okay. hebrew i okay. mean you could do it in both but i love what you do i love who you are and Thank i you. want that to be out to everyone um Finally, uh, what I'd like to know is what are your, what's your long-term vision? I know that sometimes it's not good to have a long-term vision. It's I mean, always I, good. Well, sometimes we want to. I'm doing wanna... workshop of vision board. Yes. <laughs> I need to walk no, the no. talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? Where sometimes um, inspiration and the heart needs to lead you and you don't want to stifle that by, like you said, that person who wants it this way, this way, this way. But as far, what is the future for you? When I'm connected to a vision, I'm not connected to how it will look like Mm -hmm. and, uh, how can I get there? Mm -hmm. The things that I connected when I, I'm starting to viewing my vision is why, I want it, and how do I want to feel? That's it. The answers, the universe, the, he gives me the answers w- while I'm walking, mm-hmm. you know? Like uh, when I was, uh, uh, I, I, was ri- I, I, I write my uh, Thanksgiving every day in the morning. I write 10 things that I'm thankful about them. Wow. And in the nighttime with my son, my six years old son, before we go to bed, we, we said, uh, we sang uh, five things that we thanks about them in order that I want him to, to do it yes. for the ritual. So I was writing two years that I'm so, I, I'm writing five things that uh, I'm thankful about them that already have in my life. Mm-hmm. And I'm writing five things that I'm, thankful about them that doesn't, uh, I don't have them in my life, but I write them in a present. uh, As if they're now. Yeah, yeah. So I was writing two years long. Every morning, I'm so thankful about having this bridge between the neurological therapy Mm -hmm. and the creative. 
And one day when I was doing uh, NLP uh, therapy for some woman, uh, in the end of the session, she told me she is a therapist by herself. Wow. And she asked me if I know what is neurographic. I said no, and she started to explain. And when she went out of the studio, I just signed into the school of mm-hmm. neurographic because I realized I received the bridge I was asking for, wow. you know? But if I would, would connect to what I want to be, mm-hmm. I w- would never think about neurographic because I didn't know that there is something like this. So I just need to ask the, f- the, the universe what I want to feel. What's the result? Yeah, just the feeling, the, the being, okay? And why? Why I'm willing to do everything in order to... to have this feeling. And then the universe always give me the best things, the best solution that I can't think about them, you know, because we think like this, but the universe is very uh, wide. Wide? Wide. Wide, big. Yeah. Gadol? Yeah, yeah. Gadol, uh-huh. gadol. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. High five, boom. Um, wow, this has been so great. Yeah. Um, Is there anything you want to... So before we do that, I'm going to just let all of you know that inside the description on the YouTube version of this video, I'm going to put info on how you can get in touch with Khadar. Uh, and if you want to come down to Beersheva, which I strongly suggest you do. You know do. that I have uh, children uh, that come in from the U.S. to my summer camp? No. They booked uh, by advance and they coming every year to my summer camp. So as we <laughs> close, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to tell me about the summer camp. And I want to ask you if you know what is Wabi Sabi. No, I don't. Okay. Please. So, Wabi Sabi is a... Uh, I'm ancient. the worst, worst. interviewer so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wabi Sabi is a ancient Japanese uh, Buddhist philosophy okay that uh, seeing beauty in, in imperfection oh. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, when I was a student in uh, art school, mm-hmm. I uh, realized that all my friends, every time everything was very clean with their art, everything was correct, very symmetric, and my art was totally different. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one time when we... we, when, when we um, Uh, was having like a test mm-hmm. that you walk with the uh, with the uh, teachers and they need to see all the art my art was hanging on the wall and we were in an other uh, friend uh, area of her heart mm-hmm. uh, of her, her art and we suddenly heard a boom that was my art falling up uh, into the oh. ground Oops. and when we arrived there I told them this is the work you know because the work is living the All oh, the time. Wow. This is the work. The, uh, what can I do? Okay. My head. So Wabi Sabi, Sabi saved my life because every time I do a m- mistake, I have a scratch, I have a crack, I have something that I, 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 I wasn't meaning to do. Mm-hmm. I said, this is Wabi Sabi, you know? But in life, I was getting the point, the really deep point of this because cracks and stretches and all these things happen. You will always have them. We are not perfect. And the trying to be perfect mm-hmm. and trying to do everything perfect, I can see with the children when they're coming from um, regular schools mm-hmm. that they teach them, you need to draw inside the lines and you need to do this like this. They're killing their creativity. Because creativity doesn't have no limits, you know? And you should be just free with your... Uh, when, when you do... I'm not saying that you don't need to study classical mm-hmm. uh, drawing and classical methods in order to be very professional. But not everyone wants to be artist. But everyone wants to do art. Yes. You know? And when you're doing art, you don't need to do it in a specific way. It doesn't need to be beautiful. Not all the art is beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's a mistake that we all have. It's not to uh, have to be symmetric or correct. You just need to do. Even if you take your paper and you throw it to the garbage, it's okay. The work was done. That's it. Wow. That was intense. That was so... <laughs> my mind is like... 
Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, do you want to talk about the the uh, the classes? Um, I just can uh, invited you. I have a dream mm-hmm. uh, to take uh, groups uh, outside of the country because I really, really uh, believe in the mixing of nature, mm-hmm. art, and therapy. Okay. And I have a dream to go outside from Israel, to go to, uh, also in Israel, yeah? Mm-hmm. But also outside to, to, to bring it worldwide uh, in order that the hearts from all over the place can meet with the art. You know, art is a, is a language. Yes. Uh, and you can be whatever you want to be and doing art with other people. And so you can help me with this dream to go outside from Israel, to bring uh, groups, uh, to do something uh, all together. Uh, I have a few people all over the world that I'm following them. Mm-hmm. I can see they're they doing all uh, lots of retreats and this kind of ta- stuff. This is my next step. That's what you want to do. That's your next step. Yeah. That's amazing. So I'm going to do what I can to get the word out. Thank you. Um Hadar, uh, Hadar, Rabinovich. Rabinovich. Okay, I got it right <laughs> this time. You know what is Rabinovich? It's the rabbi of the community. Okay. Wow. So I didn't even think of that. Rabinovich. Uh, never, ever, ever, ever going to forget that again. <laughs> Hadar, Rabbi, Ra- see, I screwed it. <laughs> Rabinovich. Thank you so much for coming on my show. Thank you. It was a pleasure for oh, me. This, was, this is going to be the best Do you one feel ever. the, the I connection? Do, I do. I do. This is fun. <laughs> ah! All right. Um, that's it, you guys. Thank you so much. Todo lo va. Lejito ve. Yala bye. Um, wow. We just have Woo-hoo! this. You did so good. Yeah, you think? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.